name is Mike Wall, and I'm passionate about exploring health. Come on a journey with me across Newfoundland and Labrador as we learn about wellness here at home. <laughs> Music is the soundtrack to our lives. It triggers emotions and moments that we forget about until we hear that one song that takes us back. There has to be an explanation behind our connection to music. We know everyone can relate to it. They say that music is healing. Let's see if that's true. If I'm gonna talk about health and music, then I've gotta start with my friend Brad. He's a barber and musician and has had a major health scare. I'm curious to see if music played a role in his recovery. Your family's from Newfoundland originally, right? And they're all musicians? My, my mom is from a town in Placentia called Fox Harbor, yeah. And um, not all of them, but a bunch are, yeah. My grandfather played and uncles played, mainly accordion. So that explains my connection to the, the music here. So Brad, you had some really significant health challenges. And how did that shift your perspective about coming to Newfoundland and mm -hmm. things like being part of music? Yeah, yeah, I had stage four uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in uh, 2013. So I did a bunch of chemo and a bit of radiation and stuff. And uh, yeah, came through it all. And yeah, definitely uh, made me prioritize and, and kind of reevaluate what's important. And you know, my, da my dad passed away from cancer at, at a young age as well. So, you know, all these things just kind of led to me sort of thinking like, I, I can't take the time I have for granted, you know, like, and uh, I played music as a kid. But uh, since moving here, I found a community for it and, and began to take it way more seriously and play a lot more. So when I got here, I, I probably was familiar with a lot of the music, but couldn't play it. And, you know, some of the more experienced, better players were, were super encouraging. Probably people I hang out with the most now and like uh, my closest friends here are all musicians. So and, and, you know, I never would have met them if not for, for playing and, and getting involved. The other thing is, I think, like, you know, the the culture here and like how big a part of it music is. Mm. Uh, like it's not hard to find people to play with here. It doesn't matter what kind of music you're into. Like a few friends and I, uh, you know, we get together pretty much weekly and once in a while we'll, we'll kind of have a jam, like kitchen party type situation. We're thinking of getting together. Do you want to join us? I'll take, uh, yeah, I'll check it out, man. I don't know how good I can contribute, but I'll do my best. Yeah, Saturday night. Oh, perfect. So it seems that music really can help us heal and it can help us through some really challenging points in our life. So my conversation with Brad really made me want to find out more about how music can actually help us when we're sick. Now I work at the Faculty of Medicine at Memorial University, so I have access to different researchers that actually study medicine. So I reached out to Dr. Ben Zendel, who studies the impact of music on our body, mind, and soul. Dr. Zendel's lab is in the medical school where I teach, and from what I've heard, his work is changing how people see music. It's not just playing an instrument to Dr. Zendel, it's a way to actually improve our health. So you use music to see how the brain works and how it responds. Can you explain how that, how you go about measuring that in the lab? Sure, so there's two things that, that I really look at with music in the brain. Um, the first is, is how the brain processes music. So music is one of these universal human activities, right? Like language, speech, things like that. Uh, and you know, every known human culture uh, throughout history has engaged in some sort of musical activity. So it's one of these universals. A second line of work is looking at how music experiences, music training, changes the brain uh, over time. So, wh so what are some of the findings you're, you're seeing? You're seeing that people that are exposed to music throughout their lives or are formally trained in music actually have a different function when it comes to the way their brain works later on in life? That's right. And what you generally find in those people who've chosen to take music lessons have higher cognitive abilities as they age and better hearing abilities as they age. Um, and those better hearing abilities actually come from cognitive processing, not so much the ear itself, right? Because if we think of the ear, the ear is made up of these little hair cells and the hair cells move to sound and they send a signal to the brain. But when you think about hearing in, let's say, a bar or a pub or a restaurant, and your brain has to figure out who's your friend's voice, who's the people at the table next to you, you know, what's the, where's the music playing, what are those, you know, what's that beer tap pouring and the glasses clinking and things like that. And so that's a, a cognitive problem, not a, an, ear, an ear problem per se. 
And what we find is that older musicians do better at solving that problem, and that leads to a, a better ability to understand speech when there's loud background noise. And if you ask most older adults who have some hearing issues, that's the biggest problem, is, is hearing when there's background noise. And so now there are studies that are giving people music lessons, comparing them to some other task that we don't expect to improve auditory abilities. So for example, I did a study, we had people play video games mm -hmm. for the same amount of time, learn to play video games. And it's, a cha it's just as cognitively challenging, but to play a video game, you don't need to have particularly good hearing. And, and what we found was actually the six months of music training improved people's ability to understand speech and noise compared to this group that played video games. And so that, those types of studies um, are now providing pretty good evidence that musical training can be used as a form of, let's say, medicine. That's amazing. And that's, I've heard that saying before that, you know, music is medicine. How can this be used for people uh, in life? It's a lifestyle choice that we're seeing along with exercise that can sort that can preserve physical and mental health uh, as we age. And the more people generally engage in challenging tasks as they age, uh, the better preserved their cognitive function seems to be. So it turns out that there actually is scientific proof that music is good for our mental health. I can see how coordinating your fingers with your brain is like exercise when it comes to playing music. So now I'm curious how music can be used as a form of therapy for mental health. And so I need to talk to a mental health advocate. And it just so happens that Juno Award winner, singer-songwriter Amelia Curran is not only an amazing musician, but she's also a huge advocate for mental health in our community. Amelia recorded a music video that brought awareness to the struggles we face here in Newfoundland and Labrador when it comes to mental health. I need to learn why she feels music and mental health go hand in hand. What does music give people in its best form? Uh, I think it's, I think it's a sense of belonging. Um, because if, I think if you sit anyone down and say, who are you, where are you, how are you doing, what are you doing for me? It, nobody can answer those things but a song that you can hold in your hand that provides you with your identity, with your sense of belonging, with the knowledge that you're not alone, all of these things, whether or not you can actually put it into words, whether or not you can describe it. I've always said creating music is a process of describing the indescribable. I shouldn't have to explain it. If I could explain it, I wouldn't have written the song. It just, it does the work for you. It does the connectivity for you. It does the sense of belonging for you and you're safe there. Mm -hmm. I think that's, yeah, yeah, I don't have a word for it. And, and Newfoundland's a really special place. I heard a musician come here one time and they said that they uh, had to get a guitar for Christmas, but everybody else here just borrows one from a family member. Yeah. <laughs> what is it about <laughs> Newfoundland and the music industry or music in general that's made it so special? Uh, it's, I want to say the music community. The music community yes. is a thing that I, that I cling to and where I've I've found after many years that I really do belong. Um, but it's not just the music community, it's, it's, it's every community. It's, it's our identity as Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. And I, and I understand it's different in each little pocket going along, but there's, there's this connectivity of our music. And then whether it's, it's our historical music, or it's brand new music, or it's music that you just made up, which is basically what songwriting is, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm something I just made up, or, you know, think of recitations, storytelling. These are musical things too. These are things that, that keep us safe and, and help us remember who we are and why that's important and why that matters. We've found our, our little place on the earth and our family's here and our stories are here and we're safe here. And I think that we need our music to stay connected to that and we need our stories to stay connected to that. And how lucky are we to still have it? Uh, you started an organization called mm -hmm. It's Mental that helps a lot of people. Tell me about that. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's such a goofy name. I don't know I think how it's that happened. It's the first shirt. I thought it was great. It's, like it's, it's, a, it's yeah. a newfinism, I like to call them, like yeah. a euphemism, but it's a newfinism and it's, you know, it's mental. That's mental. And I was like, I had a deep understanding that it was a systemic issue and that we didn't necessarily need to be victims of a system when we could control things in our own communities. Mm -hmm. We're not going to solve mental illness, 
is the thing. And no, I don't think anyone's under a delusion that we're going to solve mental illness. We can have the knowledge, the things that you're afraid to talk about, the things that are foreign to you. It's okay that they're foreign. It's okay that you think it's really weird. It's okay that you don't want to talk to somebody who's, who's mentally gone over the edge or whatever you may think it is. I mean, you learned CPR. Maybe you learned it from TV. Maybe you learned it when you were in Girl Guides. I don't know, but it's out there and it's accessible and you know you should know it and you know a little bit about it even if you've never taken a class. So what's wrong with having mental health first aid training right alongside that? That's my big dream, is to have them be the same class because both are life-saving. I'm convinced music is good for our mental health. It can help us express emotions that sometimes words can't say. But it's nice to see Amelia advocating for mental health with such a good platform to do it through music. Now, I think it's only fitting at this point that I actually learn how to play an instrument since I got a jam with Brad later, but my bass guitar skills probably aren't gonna cut it. I do think, though, I might be able to hold a beat. This is Steve Blunden. Besides being a talented local musician, he also builds traditional drums from scratch. And today, he's gonna to show me how one's made from start to finish. So today we're gonna to make a traditional bow ran or bow ran. What is it? It's a traditional Irish drum. It was developed in Ireland. It started out as a tool. It was basically a tray, a wee tray, or a sieve, as they call it. And they used to stretch an animal skin on us. And basically, somebody started to hit it with a stick or their hand to make music and they decided to make a beat with it and it would go go great for dance music with fiddle music, horny music and it just evolved from there. So it, at one time it was used as a as a war drum for like marching troops in the war and stuff like that. Very but it's, it's a fairly new instrument in the music scene to, like, compared to a fiddle or a guitar. It's mm -hmm. only been around 100 years or so as far as I know. Yeah. And in Newfoundland, it's only been around since probably around the 60s. Yeah, it's definitely used in a lot of music today, but you actually make these drums. Can we walk through the steps you have to go through? We certainly can. These are drums I made myself. Uh, two different styles, they're both tunable. One looks more of a traditional drum than this one do, just from the shape of their tops. Mm -hmm. And you can see this one got visible tuners on the inside mm -hmm. versus this one don't. The tuners are made into the shell. Okay, so what is the first step that we need to take when we build one of these things? First step to get one of these is actually getting a raw piece of wood. Is uh, these shells are made from ash. It's uh, wood I buy from a local wood supplier, and then I basically I have to get that wood into a round shape. So I will cut that wood down to thin pieces about one eight inch thick, and sand it smooth, and get it in the round shape. I had to soak it in hot water to bend it. And I'll use a couple layers. This is this drum here is made up of two layers, two layers of wood laminated together, with another layer inside here for your tuning ring and to hold your tuning hardware. After we do that, well, is obviously we we have to trim the edges and sand it and stain it. And after we do that, is when we actually mount the skin. There's probably a hundred or so tacks in each drum. The way I mount the skin. Wow. And the thing is, I'm looking right here underneath it, there's some dried skin here as well. What type of skin is that? This is a goat skin. This is actually a local goat skin from Perry's Cove, Newfoundland. I cured this myself. Mm, excellent. There's no chemicals other than salt used on this. Amazing. So I know that music can be therapeutic, but even making an instrument can be good for our brains. I'm more handy than I am musical, so building that instrument really got me in the right headspace. So it's important to keep these musical traditions alive. Whether it's playing music, or listening to music, or even building an instrument, music's good for our mental health. So I've got my drum, I'm ready to jam with Brad, but I need some last minute inspiration from somebody who definitely understands the importance of maintaining the tradition of music here in our province. It was a beautiful day, so what better time to meet up with Alan Doyle for a stroll and a chat about music. If anyone can answer my questions, it's him. What a day we got for it. It's gorgeous, isn't it? I mean, we're down in Kitty Vitty right now. This is a little bit like where you grew up in Petty Harbor. Very similar, yeah. Uh, Kitty Vitty and the Battery are a couple of places in the city of St. John's that are, uh, that are similar to, you know, the small fishing towns like where I'm from in Petty Harbor or in, uh, you know, any of the other ones down the southern shore, but these places would have been kind of insular in a way, I suppose, years ago, that, that you know, the 
40 or 50 houses that would have been in, in Kitty Vitty would have been probably felt quite separate from St. John's at one point. So when you grow up in a town like this that is such a small community, music has to be part of that. So did you decide to become a musician or did you just like sort of fall into it naturally? Oh, completely naturally for me. I, like, I was born into the Doyle family, the only, in a town of completely based on the fishery, I'm born into the only family that are not occupied by fishermen. And, and my uncles were the band, you know. They were, and they played for the weddings and the funerals and the dances. And, and my mom came to Petty Harbor from Marystown and she was to, looked after the choir. Right. And all that stuff. So it was just, uh, for me, music was kind of everywhere and incidental. And I really have kind of no memory of learning how to play guitar. I only remember learning that not everybody had one, you know. Right. And, and I thought that that was weird. It just happens organically and not, uh, and not in any way, uh, you know, formalized. Yeah. That's good. Well, let's go inside and we'll, right. we'll have a chat out back. All right. When you're performing, you know, there's, there's got to be some benefits to it for the way you feel yeah. and what it does for you, but also, like, what do you think it does for the audience when they're there, besides getting sore calves the next day, <laughs> jumping around all night? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the most practical thing is, is it's, you know, from, from an audience perspective, at least I'd like to think so anyway, is that it's, a, it's an escape, right? And that it's a and it's a shared experience that's an escape. So yeah. it's like you're not escaping by yourself, you're getting lost together, as Lou Rodeo would say. And like, so you have this sort of shared uh, experience that's, if you, if, you know, the guy on stage does it right, yeah. will make you laugh and make you cry and make you sing along. And, and I think that in a time when, you know, entertainment has been changing so quickly in the last three, two, three decades, what have you, and uh, it's still amazing to me that that people still love this art form. Mm. They love to come and face this way while some other guy faces this way <laughs> and sings to them. Yeah. That's, that, you know, I don't know how many thousands of years old that is, yeah. but it's still um, very, very meaningful to people. And I think the pandemic showed us how badly people missed it, you know? Singing together as yeah. a performative art, yeah. I think is, is very, very human and, uh, and valued. The term music as medicine has been popping up with everybody I talk to. You know, is there a link between music, mental health, or even physical health in your view? Well, I, Matt Byrne, who's one of my favorite singers, I heard Matt on the radio, I don't know, two or three years ago now. And Matt said something that kind of blew my mind, and because I, I never actually heard it put in words before, is that he said singing is physically rewarding. You know, because singing, of course, just like any other thing, you use muscles and parts of your body that you don't use doing that else hardly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so purely as a physical thing, it's rewarding to do. You're right. And the, and I, I would have never thought about that, to be honest with you, until I heard him say it. And then, of course, you know, for your own mental health or for my own mental health, of course, it's, it's not hard to figure out. It's just, it's what I love to do more than anything else. Right. You know, so when you get to do it, you like it. And when you don't get to do it, it hurts. Yeah, right. So, right. and, and, and this, you don't need to think any more about it than that. Music has a way of bringing people together. It helps us escape the stress of day-to-day -day life even just for a little second. Now for me, I'm learning that music's a good way to add extra healthy habits into my lifestyle. But Newfoundland's a really special place. It's not uncommon for your neighbor to come over and play a tune in your kitchen or your shed. And I live in Logie Bay, which has no shortage of musical talent. It just so happens that my neighbor is a local music legend. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Good, Mike. Thanks for coming over, man. We're actually right, neighbors. I know. Any, any <laughs> night out in Logie Bay is a good night. I know. We're about 50 feet apart, so I couldn't help but ask you because I've learned all about music. I've talked to scientists about music. I've even learned to make a drum. I've talked to musicians. But, you know, I wanted to ask you about traditional music because it's such a big part of what you do. Like, why is music so key to our traditions here in Newfoundland? Well, traditional music here is cer it certainly explains our past. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the old saying, if you don't understand your past, you can't move into the future. But also, it's a, it's a music that brings together all ages. Yeah. And from young to old, uh, everybody knows a lot of the same old songs, and they can sing along and play along, and, and it's, uh, it's just a good old time. Yeah, it's part of our culture. It's passed down. It's like stories. Exactly. And everybody has their song. Like a certain person, you'll go to a kitchen party and they'll say, okay, you know, well, Mike is your song. And that's the song Mike sings or Patrick or, you know, whomever, you know, that's the song they sing. Or, you know, you play a set of tunes on the accordion. That's your set of tunes and you're known for that. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you come together, you got to do your song. Or you got to do your tune and it makes everybody come together and have a good time. 
Well, talk about small world. I mean, you guys know everybody in Brad's family, and Brad is a friend of mine. It's just it's such a small thing. But you know, it's funny. I've been talking about music with everybody, but I haven't actually heard anybody play any music. And I know you guys usually play bigger crowds, but I'm wondering, since you're here and you got your gear, I think no we can play a song? No problem at all. What do you think, boys? Brad, Patrick will do a little bit of Star Logan Bay. Yes, he's we're here. Hang on. All right. <laughs> and Boyk, too. I'm going to try. <laughs> I'll be quiet. Good job, fellas. A few jazz chords there, but they go over.